Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. Hungary has been holding parliamentary elections, which began at six o'clock this morning. The Fidesz party, led by current Prime Minister Viktor Orban, are the favourites to win. The famous Conservative leader, if victorious, will be elected Prime Minister for a third successive term. We simply stand by democracy now. Orban stressed the importance of the elections for Hungary. We are a member state of the EU and a loyal member of all the international organizations. At the same time, we stand firmly beside the interests of our country because we love our homeland and we fight for its future. Prime Minister Orban hopes to win his third term of office after he promoted himself as a defender of Christian values and Hungarian culture in light of the immigration crisis in Europe. The EU is not in Brussels, it's in Berlin, in Budapest, in Warsaw, in Prague and in Bucharest. Therefore, the European Union does not stand for Brussels, it stands for an international capital of unified countries. Polish politicians showed their support for Viktor Orban following an increasingly political closeness of relations between the two countries. Leader of the Polish ruling Law and Justice Party, Jarosław Kaczyński, visited Hungary on Friday to be present at the unveiling of the Smolensk plane crash monument. At the ceremony, he encouraged the Hungarian people to vote for Orban. Freedom, independence and dignity of a nation. For us, these values are represented by Prime Minister Viktor Orban. If I may, I would like to speak not only to you present here, but also to all of Hungarian people. In two days, it will be you who will decide the way to freedom. Initial results of the elections will be known around midnight. However, the Hungarian people may have to wait until next Saturday for the final and official outcome of the elections. Slovenia could become the latest country to oppose the European Union's common asylum policy. The blow is likely to be delivered by the Conservative Party, SDS, which is leading the polls ahead of the election later this summer. Last Thursday, the SDS announced that it wants no part in the EU's refugee relocation and resettlement scheme for Slovenia. The SDS lawmaker Branko Grims, who presented the party's motion in Parliament, told the press that the system of refugee quotas is dead and it is harming Slovenia because it costs a lot. Slovenia was one of the countries that were most affected by Angela Merkel's decision in 2015 to open the doors to Europe for millions of people from Africa and the Middle East. After the decision of Hungary to close the border, hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants travelled through Croatia and Slovenia in order to reach Northern Europe. For a couple of weeks in 2015, as many as 10 to 15,000 migrants crossed the Slovenian border each day, pouring into the sleepy Slovenian countryside. The leader of the SDS, Janes Janša, is responsible for the party's ardent resistance against mass immigration. In a recent speech, he advocated a program of positive patriotism against Against internationalism. He also noted that it seemed like the majority of European cities have already lost the fight for identity and followed that up by saying, look who the mayors are, look at the structure of residence. If SDS and Jansha win the elections this summer, Slovenia will join ranks with other Central East European countries such as Poland, Hungary and Austria, which also oppose the immigration policies of Brussels and Berlin. April the 10th marks the 8th anniversary of the Smolensk crash, a catastrophe that killed 96 people, including President of Poland Lech Kaczynski. The Russian investigation team blamed the pilots. However, Polish scientists have had doubts about that conclusion and conducted their own research. Professor Wiesław Binienda of Akron University is leading the investigation and, according to him, the evidence points to an explosive charges that were set off inside the airplane. Televizja Republika's Tomasz Sakiewicz asked him about the different scenarios that could have caused the catastrophe. You are describing a series of explosions. Wouldn't similar damage have occurred if the plane hit trees or the ground without being destroyed by a bomb? No, there is no precedence in history. There is no reason that an explosion on the wing could cause an explosion in the cabin of the airplane. Jet fuel causes a relatively low energy explosion. 
Military explosive charges provide very concentrated energy, and thus we see curls of sheet metal of the airplane, and this is proof of an explosion. Police have detained four men in Berlin with links to the 2016 Islamist attack on a Christmas market in Berlin. The police have stated that one of them was planning an attack on a half marathon taking place in Berlin today. Yesterday, three people were killed and 20 suffered injuries after a man drove a van into a large crowd in the German city of Munster. The public service TV channel ZDF claims the driver had links to far-right organisations. There was a large police presence in the city as thousands of people had gathered for a pro kurdish demonstration. The perpetrator, 48-year-old Jens R., shot himself after the attack. Shortly before 3.30 p.m., a vehicle drove into the outdoor area of a restaurant in the city center. Three people were killed, 20 injured, of which six are in serious condition. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has released a statement in which she expressed her shock and pledges support for everybody harmed and their families. There were initial reports that it could be an Islamist terror attack, but it was denied in the evening by the Interior Minister of the State of North Rhine-Westphalia, Herbert Ruhl. There is nothing suggesting at the moment that there was an Islamist motive, but it's still too early to tell with certainty. The incident will be investigated from every angle. The German media is reporting that the perpetrator had sought psychiatric help between 2014 and 2016. After the attack, police raided his home and found an AK-47 assault rifle. Germany has been plagued by a string of terror attacks in recent years. Fears are growing that political violence from Islamists, the extreme left and the extreme right will continue to escalate for years to come. The 11th Katinsky March of Shadows took place on the streets of Warsaw today. The unique Silent March is a commemoration of the cat in manslaughter. The one-of-a-kind commemoration takes place on the Sunday before April 13th, which is the day of remembrance for the victims of the cat in massacre. Around April 13th, the whole of Poland commemorates the tragic murder of thousands of Poles at Katyn. In the spring of 1940, Russian Soviet soldiers followed the orders of the Soviet command to exterminate the elite of the Polish officers and people of culture, such as scientists and actors. More than 20,000 Poles were gathered in the woods near the village of Katyn, where the Russian soldiers shot all of them in the back of their heads and buried them in mass graves. For years, the Russians hid the truth about the manslaughter. However, the graves were discovered by the Germans in 1943. The Katyn massacre is one of the most tragic crimes inflicted on the Polish nation during the Second World War, as the murdered Poles were all highly educated people from various walks of life. The Katyński March of Shadows is a remembrance organized by the Radosław Historical Reenactment Group. A couple of hundred people dressed in Polish military uniforms from World War II march silently among pedestrians, which makes for a unique and striking experience. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm John Carter. Poland Daily returns same time tomorrow. Good night.